Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new Cool Space Program video. Today we'll have a look whether you should still buy the KSP DLCs in 2020. First up, the Making History DLC. There, you get an entire new game mode, and a lot of new missions here. And the Mission Maker game mode, like I already said, which I haven't really touched up on too much myself, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Now on to the real deal, a lot of new parts, starting with the command pods. You got five command pods, three Soviet era type of command pods with one, two and three Kubels in them respectively, one Gemini type of command pod with two Kubels capacity and a mineral exclusion module, which has also some liquid fuel and oxidizer in it. Then on to the RCS tanks, there you get one new RCS tank in the new tank size, more to that in just a second, and small tiny radially mountable RCS tankies. Now on to the first new diameter, the 1.87 meter tanks, coming in all different variations as we're used to them. They come obviously in different color schemes, well now it's obvious, but when the DLC actually came out it was quite a new change, and obviously you have some adapters to previous sizes, aka the Mark 0 tanks, the Mark 1 tanks and the Mark 2 tanks, well the 2 meter part tanks. And on top of that you have some liquid fuel booster that has already separatrons built into them, that makes for really beautiful stage separations, usually used in Soviet type Soyuz launch vehicles. Next up, the other new diameter, the 5 meter tank parts, huge and holding a lot of fuel again in all different sizes here with obviously one adapter to go to the 3 meter parts and one stage skirt for engines and here one 3 meter part as comparison. Now onto the engines, there are 7 engines, one heavy lifter with 1300 kN of thrust, one medium lifter with 400 kN of thrust, one LV909 Terrier upgrade, the Cheetah, just more thrust and pretty much the same efficiency, just a bit heavier though. One liquid fuel booster engine with two with 240 kilonewtons of thrust in different, well as you saw, just variations. Now to the Wolfhound, the perfect upgrade of the Poodle engine, in every respect better, more ISP, more thrust. Now the skiff, good for vacuum hops, good thrust, 300 kilonewtons, and a pretty reasonable ISP. And uh, last but not least, gimbalable engine for the boosters usually used. Now on to the utilities. Here you get service base, three different service base, four in different sizes, two meter, one eight meter, and one meter part size. Where can the service base you can stuff full with batteries and fuel tanks and whatever you really need. And also you get a lot of different structural parts that I'm not gonna show, I'm just there are just too many, and some rover wheels and engine plates that can be used to place multiple engines under one fuel tank in regular symmetry without kind of being not perfectly dead on as you could previously. Then you have some a new airlock to dock and fairings, especially 5 meter part fairings are really useful in my opinion. Now onto the other DLC, the Breaking Ground DLC, the real biggest part change in this DLC are the robotics. So here you get access to a bunch of ro different robotic thingies and pistons and hinges and electric motors and rotors. All of those thingies come in different sizes so you definitely will figure out something that will suit your taste and you have access to one well, two turboshaft engines that use instead of electricity, liquid fuel and the breathable atmosphere to create torque for propeller engine, well, propeller aircraft and helicopters. Speaking of them, you obviously need propellers. They are, there are so many different sizes, you will definitely find one that will suit your taste. And that's pretty much all from the really, really new things in terms of parts for utility crafts. Do you have three different scanning arms to scan the new features and ground surface thingies that you can place on the ground to have a science base on the surface. And the biggest feature, surface features. Bam! You have here these features that can be scanned with the previously mentioned scannable arm. So now on to the conclusion. If you're just building exclusively rockets and visiting the different planetary 
planetary bodies, I would definitely suggest you get the Making History DLC, since you just get so many different parts, engines and everything you really need to further enhance your KSP experience. If you're more the creative player, not only building rockets, but planes and helicopters and other interesting contraptions, then I sh would really suggest you getting both of the DLCs, since well, obviously you get access to the robotics in the Breaking Grand Hit DLC, but you still get a lot of utility stuff out of the Making History DLC. So, on this note, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope it could help you out. Until next time.